Hey guys, before this video starts, just wanted to let you know that I've got a website called LukeScenaHGV.com and I've also got a store on it now as well. So if you want to grab yourself some merchandise, feel free. We've got mugs, we've got hoodies, we've got zoodies, which is hoodies with a zip, we've got high-vis vests, as you can see on the chair behind me, and um, yeah, it's um, it's good. I've got a store up and running, uh, and more products will be added as well, so LukeScenaHGV.com. Check it out. This video is sponsored by Trailer Training UK. Scotland is an absolutely beautiful place. Today we're going back to Glasgow in Scotland again. Um, before we go, we need to get some fuel. So, let's get some fuel. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Thank you very much for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. As you may have already gathered by the title of this video and by me saying earlier on in the video, we are on our way to Glasgow. We went here, uh, well, we went to Glasgow um, Tuesday and then we come back Wednesday. Today is Thursday, we're going back up again and then obviously we'll come back tomorrow which is, which is Friday. So um, it's a run that I've done before, I know where I'm going go to exactly the same place hopefully we're gonna get there nice and early I'm gonna explain a couple of things in a second why uh, we might be late but yeah we are uh, we're looking forward to it um, in terms of load I've got 34 pallets on the back of me I am absolutely rammed and hopefully you enjoyed the time-lapse footage of me loading it up this morning um, they wanted to get 35 on but I couldn't get the last pallet on there's just no more room um, so uh, it's pretty tight just getting the 34 on. So unfortunately I can't get the 35th pallet on. That's going to go onto another trailer on another truck and it's going to come up behind me. I think it's going to be like an hour or so behind. So um, yeah, 34 pallets going up, absolutely rammed. Um, this morning we got to the place where we get loaded um, for quarter to seven in the morning, filled it with fuel, and I parked up around the corner at 7 a.m. sharp and I was ready to be loaded. But unfortunately we didn't leave until 20 past nine this morning. So. We uh, that put me behind two hours and 20 minutes straight away to come up here, um, which is a little bit annoying. But do not fear. Yesterday, uh, Tuesday, when I when I come up here, they tipped me at 20 past five in the afternoon. So um, hopefully they're going to tip me today um, around about the same sort of time. Current ETA is, is quarter past four, and obviously I've got to get a 45 minute break in as well because we are six hours away. Six hours away, and I've already done an hour's driving as well. It's, um, it's a long way, we've got 307 miles left to go, but it was more like 350 when I left. So um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a long way, and hopefully we're gonna get there today, and hopefully we're gonna get offloaded today, because if we do, if I've worked it out correctly, um, I'll have an extra two hours drive time than what I had last time. Uh, long story short, the last time I come up here, 
Um, I actually had to start work t- Tuesday morning from Stevenage, which is like M20, uh, other side of the M25, like other side of London. So I had to come round the M25 onto the M4, and that took two and a half hours driving in the morning before I even come up to Scotland and to Glasgow. So in theory, I've got an extra two hours, maybe two and a half hours drive time today to use. And what I hope I can do is get up to Glasgow for around about five o'clock, get unloaded, leave around about six o'clock, and what I hope to do is drive for another two hours and come back down as far as I can without going over my driving time, obviously, and hopefully get down to at least Carlisle and then park up around there. Um, by which time then, tomorrow morning, I can start um, early. I'll have a nine hour rest and um, I'll only have five or, or so hours to do tomorrow morning. And it's Friday tomorrow, so who wouldn't want to be finished before lunchtime tomorrow, eh? And so if I, if I leave Glasgow at 6 o'clock and say I've done two hours driving and it was 8 o'clock in the evening, I can then have a nine hour rest, which means 7 o'clock in the morning. Is it 7 o'clock? No. 5 o'clock in the morning, I could start work again if I finished at 8. Uh, and if then I've got five hours left to go from 5 o'clock in the morning, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, back then for 10, including the break, 11 o'clock. So I could be finished tomorrow before 11 o'clock if I get unloaded today. So that's the plan. That's what I want to do, and uh, that's what I'm going to set out to achieve. So sit back, relax, enjoy the footage. We've got 300 odd miles to go. There's lots of scenery to uh, to see, especially once we get up past Glasgow, uh, Carlisle, sorry. And um, yeah, there's not a lot really I can do right now other than drive, <laughs> drive, drive, and drive, miles and miles and miles. So sit back, relax, enjoy. We've got to go past um, Tewkesbury, then sort of Birmingham, Manchester, Lancaster. Blackpool, all that sort of space, Carlisle up to Glasgow. So yeah, I'll see you in a few moments after this time lapse. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't want to waste what's left. Okay, you joined me four hours later, um, about three hours later. We've been driving for just over four hours, coming up four hours, ten minutes. Uh, got another 20 more minutes left of driving time, but this is the last services I'm going to pass before I run out of driving time. So I got to stop it at these services. It's a little bit annoying. There's another services further on down the road. Um, and I'm going to miss it by two minutes. I go over my driving time by two minutes. So um, obviously I can't do that, which is a bit annoying because I'd rather get as far as I can. But it doesn't really matter because I've still got to drive it anyway. So we're going to come off here and uh, Burton and Kendall services. We're actually um, staying, this is the same services we stayed at um, on Tuesday. Well, I stayed out on Tuesday. So um, yeah, exactly the same place. So what I need to do is put in here, get a break in, and um, also I want to check the back as well, just to make sure the pallets are still on properly. Because um, I did have to strap one of the pallets on. I'm hoping it's clear down here. It's not clear down here. I'm going to do a sharp turn. bit tight getting in there. I'm gonna have to go in here. The first one. Or the second one rather. There's a lot of caravans in here. So yeah I need to jump in the back and just double check it's all strapped up still and that the pallets are okay. All right. So I'm going to go check the pallets are okay, and then I'll put it on brake. Come on then, let's see if it's uh, it's all okay. So this pallet here, I, I put like that already, so that's not a problem. And there's three more pallets here, one, two and three. That's exactly how I put it, because like I said, I ran out of space. That was the one I'm worried about with the ratchet strap going along. Um, it looks like the ratchet 
the strap is holding, so that's good. Although, it does need tightening up. So, I'm just going to get up there now and tighten it up quickly. Don't know if you can tell. It's time to go. <laughs> Let's crack on. We are good to go. We are good to go, 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 go. All clear. Let's go. Let's floor it. Yeah, you've got to stop for me, mate. Right, so ETA is five o'clock. Um, which actually means we are doing better than what we did Wednesday because we didn't get there Wednesday until 20 past five. So that's good. The only thing is when we get here, um, I've got to park in a different place to where their building is. I think it's like they basically own more than one building. So I've got to park in another yard, but, um, yesterday there was no one there. So I had to, um, well, I went to the, the, the other yard and then they told me to go to the other yard and then I had to wait for them to turn up and they told me, yeah, just go straight into the other yard today and um, if no one's there, then I have to go get someone. So that could be fun. I could end up having to, to wait for a while before anyone actually comes and uh, starts unloading me. But I'm hoping to obviously be there for five. Actually, the ETA just kicked off two minutes quicker. So now it's 16.58. I'm hoping that I'll be leaving there by six o'clock, is what I'm hoping, because I want to do a couple of hours drive, by which time it's obviously going to be eight o'clock, and yeah, I don't want to be driving too late, because parking spaces are going to be um, filled up. That's, that's the issue that I've got at the moment. When I go back, when I come back, um, I'm going to more than likely struggle finding somewhere to park, so I probably won't get a bay. I'm probably going to have to park dodgy somewhere. So. Um, if I run out of time, I'm going to have to stop no matter where I am, do you know what I mean? It's all go over, but I see a lot of vehicles parking on the slip road on the way out of services. So if I can't get in the parking bay in the services, then I'll park on the slip stream, slip stream, slip road coming out of the services, if you know what I mean. But yeah, anyway, two hours, 40 minutes driving left to do. Let's crack on. Let's uh, do some more driving. There's some nice... Um, scenery coming up so hopefully you enjoy that as well so I'll see you in a bit. minutes maybe 50 minutes away from um, where we need to be in Glasgow but I just wanted to stop and 
to say that Scotland is an absolutely beautiful place. Like, the views are amazing. I honestly, I can't believe the views. They're, they're so fascinating. The last time I come up here, it was a little bit like cloudy and murky, so I didn't really get to see too much. But, I mean, it's raining now, but <coughs> you can just see it. There's beauty all around you. And I know that sounds a bit weird coming from a guy like me, like this my you know, big, brutal guy, if you like. But, honestly, it just looks so, it just looks so nice. The, there's like a lake or canal or something, river. It's, it's like running all the way parallel to the A74, which is what we're on now. And there's also a train track, which is also running parallel. And it's just like, it just looks amazing. You, there's these waterfalls and tunnels. There's wildlife and there's hills. There's trees, there's just, it looks amazing. And like the simplest thing, like stone fences, it just, it just, it sort of shouts out history. Like it's got something to tell you. And I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's just, I kind of, I'm kind of into history, like the Roman times and things like that. And I suppose Anglo-Saxons and, you know, that sort of thing. The Norwegians, is it Norwegians? The Vikings. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not like an expert on any of it, but it just, that sort of era um, fascinates me. And just seeing like fields, look, there's like a bridge, there's a bridge there, just a normal bridge, but it just looks nice. It's really weird, I'm saying this, I know, but it just, just, it's true. It's kind of a, kind of emotional in a way, to just how good looking it is. I mean, now it's raining, it's kind of ruined it a little bit. In the sun, it was a lot better, but it kind of just makes me, uh, this is just the start of Scotland as well, like Scotland is a big country and this is literally the start of Scotland from England. We haven't even hit Glasgow yet, look, we're 42 miles away from Glasgow. It just makes me want to visit Scotland more and go further north, you know, maybe view the islands, go on an island, there's obviously there's, there's hundreds of islands aren't there I think in Scotland. Just go, just go really, really remote places. There's, there's, there's roads parallel running to the M4, and they're on the sat nav, so you know they're public roads. And it looks like you can just stroll up to one of these roads, get out of your car, take some photographs of some like beautiful scenery. And <laughs> I really want to do it. And obviously, I can't do it in a lorry, but I definitely, I definitely want to come to Scotland on a holiday have a week off, come to Scotland and just, just have a look around Scotland. It's a beautiful place, it really is. Alrighty then, we are now off the motorway, which is the M74. And uh, got three quarters of a mile to go. It's just over, a turn left at this roundabout, a couple of roundabouts going straight over and then we're pretty much there. So we're not far away. Um, and then hopefully we get unloaded nice and quickly. And then I need to do a printout, find out how much driving time I got left. I suspect I've probably got two hours, maybe two and a half hours drive time left. So I need to use as much of that up as I can to get back um, without going over driving time or working time. Which I'll talk about more when uh, when we actually leave. Come on then, turn green. It's a red light, mate. Calm down. Excellente. Just watching the car on my right then because the car behind him was indicating. You're gonna to want to overtake me, aren't you? Yeah, and the car behind you. Allow larger vehicles more room and you just cut over into my lane. Excellente. So we need to go over this, no we need to go left here. Left at this roundabout. Cool. Uh, this roundabout we need to go right. According to that clock, it's 17.36. That is not correct. It is 
Oh, that's tight. Right, so hopefully we can just go into the yard and spin round. If not, we've got to turn round and then reverse in on the good side. I don't want to reverse in on the bad side. It's very busy, isn't it? I still got that car behind me, I can't see it. Yeah, it's still behind me. So, this is where we want to go. Um, there's not an awful lot of room. Oh well, I've committed now. I should be able to reverse into that bay there, I think. I hope. Although it will be slightly blind. Someone's been messing around with my windows. So it's a completely blind reverse, this. And I'm very close to the building. I might need to just get out and double check I can make it. Give me a sec. As long as I full lock it like I have, it should be all right. Until we hear a bang. just completely blind and you can't see anything. Two shot. I'm going to hit the trailer. That's better, I can see a bit now.
Excellent. Right, now I just need to budge over. Hopefully that's going to be okay. So what I need to do now is uh, I need to go find someone and hopefully get this trailer tipped, and uh, yeah, then we can head back, head back to uh, to England, I suppose. <laughs> See you in a bit. This video is sponsored by Trailer Training UK, operating across the south, delivering HGV Class One and Two courses as well as weekly CPC courses. They also do car and trailer courses and many more. I have heard nothing but good things about these guys. Check out their online presence. They got a 91.7% first time pass rate. And if you quote Luke, see you get a 5% discount on top of the 5% price fee they already have. Therefore, you're 100% guaranteed the best price. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So, whose idea was it to bring all this rain? It's raining. So, I've gone to speak to him, and I've told him I'm here. Um, and they just said, here, it's a bit tight, I told him you see so that's what I'm doing. I was going to try and get some of this stuff out, but it started raining. I don't want to get in trouble for getting it out and it getting wet. So, while it's raining, he's just going to be sat on his bed for a sec. Ooh, just stopped raining all of a sudden. <laughs> so, I've been here for half an hour now. Um, still no sign of anybody, so I've started taking stuff off. As I mentioned earlier, we've got two stores worth. They're going to the same store, but different days. So I've organized it for them at least. I put the first day over there, the second day is over there. And um, we've still got those there. Put all this over here. So, yeah, don't really want to get it all out because A, there's not a lot of room, and B, if it rains, at least only some of it's getting damaged. <laughs> um, but all that's metal work anyway, so it don't really matter. Whereas all this is like plastic and um, merchandise and things like that, so I don't really want to get that wet. So, I'm going to go and have a break, and uh, hopefully they come soon. Right, we're tipped. Took just over half an hour to get tipped, and um, we actually had a 45 minute break as well, so that's good because it means now our time's reset. Just need to work out now how much driving time we got and whether I can get to the destination I want planned on getting to. So I can't remember what the services were called, but I got a services lined up ready in Carlisle just after Carlisle, so I'm aiming to get there. Um, yeah, after Carlisle. Uh, it's, it's 99 miles away, it's going to take two hours to get there, so I'm hoping I've got two hours driving, I would have thought so. So, 7.15, so that's 5 is 20, 40 is one hour, that means 8, then two hours. I've got two hours 45 left of drive time. The other thing I've got to worry about is working time. And this is something I want to quickly touch upon as well. Don't take too much notice in what time I say I'm at places and what time I started and things like that. Because I'll say something like, for example, this morning, I think I said, I started at six o'clock. I say six o'clock because it's just easier. Uh, it's just like a ni nice round number. I actually started at 6.16. But um, yeah, someone mentioned in my last video that the timings don't add up. And that's because I just set round off the number. I might say I started at one o'clock in the afternoon, but I actually started at half past 12 or half past one. 
I just round, I just round it all the time. I try to anyway. So I started at six sixteen this morning, which means I can work till nine sixteen or twenty one sixteen. Yeah. So that's my fifteen hours. So I can only work until basically quarter past nine. My ETA at this place is twenty five past eight. So I can easily get to Carlisle. So that's what I plan on doing now. Um, I'm ready to go. So we're going to get a cracker lacking. Like I said, I'm easily going to get to Carlisle. Um, and I might even push it and see if I can get any further. Because the more driving I do today, means the less driving I do tomorrow. And I'm already, yeah, I'm already, I've already done more than 12 hours today. So I'm already on a 15 hour shift, if you like, and I'm already on an automatic nine hour rest. So I might as well just carry on and use up all the driving time or all my working time. So just to reiterate, I've got two hours 45 left. As long as I don't go over two hours 45 on my taco, and as long as it isn't past quarter past nine at night, I'm fine. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna crack on and try and find somewhere to park. I did notice as well, before I drove, uh, I drove off, the side lights weren't working on the trailer. Uh, well, actually the rear lights on the, on the right hand side. And I had this problem the other day when I was at Stevenage. All the side markers down the trailer weren't working. I got a dodgy Susie, I think. Um, I've, I've got it working now, I don't know if you can see, you might be able to see the light on the front of the trailer. Um, it's working now, but it's the second time it's happened, so I might need to get a new a new black um, electric socket put on. I think it's, uh, I've got to push it in and it's fine, I think it's slowly working its way out. So that, I will keep an eye on that light, as long as that light is always on in the mirror, then I know my lights are on. Anyway, let's get crack a lack in and uh, hopefully we can find somewhere decent to park. Right, so we've been driving now for one hour and 45 minutes since you last saw me. Um, I've got another hour on the driving time clock thing left, so I've got another hour left. But I'm going to pull into these services here, South, South Weight Services, uh, in half a mile. Just because I want to see if there are, there are any spaces. If there aren't, then I'll go on to the next services, which I think Kendall is like 28 miles away which I've got enough time to get there, so. But I just thought, rather than get to the last one and then realise I can't find anywhere to park, I might as well just check here. I've got a lawyer in front of me wanting to come in as well, so. Also better he's gonna nick the last space or something. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna come into these services here. Just have a quick look, see if there is anywhere to park. If not, no big deal, we'll go on to the next one. So let's have a look. It does look pretty busy. Lorries, coaches, go right. Looks like quite a big, um, big services. And it does look like there's a, oh, there's loads of space, loads of space. I think what we do is we park here. Um, oh, I'm just thinking the way it's organised. Yeah, just looking at the way it's organised. So you leave one lane clear so you can get out by the looks of it. Well, that's not what people seem to be doing. I don't like the way some people are parked. I don't want to get blocked in. Um, that's the way out. I think I'll just park here. It looks like you're supposed to sort of like park two two lines and then keep the next line clear so it, so each lorry can get away. But like 
there's lorries in every lane, so I don't want to get blocked in, so I'm parking in. So that's me done. That's me done for the day. We are still 260 miles away from where we got to drop this trailer off. 260 miles. Uh, it's four hours and 52 minutes. I was, I was trying to get close enough so then I had less than four and a half hours drive time left in the morning so that I could get straight to how a, how a tenant is where I drop the trailer off before I need a break. But firstly, if I get caught in traffic, I'm going to need a break anyway. And secondly, once I take the trailer off, I've got to go back to our yard. That's another 20 minutes. And then again, I'm going to need a break. So I think either way, I need a break tomorrow. So um, we'll just park up now five hours to get there. And uh, what we'd probably do is drive for a couple of hours until rush hour traffic. Because it's, what time is it now? 8, 8.22. It's when the card's coming out, so let's just say 25 past 8, so I can start at 25 past 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 25 past 5 I can start. Yeah, 25 past 5. So um, 6, 7, by 8 o'clock there's going to be rush hour traffic, so I expect I'm going to do 2 hours, maybe 2 and a half hours driving, then get a 45 minute break in, wait until the rush hour traffic is uh, finished, and then carry on from there. So I think that's the plan. So yeah, I'm uh, gonna get some food, gonna go sleep, and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It's half past five. We um, not long woke up. Ah, tired. We're um, still in the. But I can't even talk, that's how tired I am. <laughs> oh, we're still in the services. I had a good night's sleep, just just tired. I did well, I did I know I was still awake last night at eleven o'clock, so put it that way. I think at twelve o'clock I was still up. So yeah, I'm gonna pop into the services, use the toilet facilities, freshen up, brush my teeth, and um do some checks and then I'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're good to go. Checks are done. I've uh, popped to the restroom, the little boys' room. Relieved myself of my bladder, <laughs> and now we can uh, we can leave. Ugh. Oh, I can't really see what's coming from the left row. Man. This is a horrible turning. Turn left just so I can see. All clear. So yeah, uh, 260 miles away from where we need to be to get the trailer chopped off. What's the way out? Straight on. Yeah, straight on. Sat nav saying go right. But it's not. Um, that's why you should never listen to your sat nav. Always use your eyes and follow the road. Yeah, so um, 260 miles back to where we need to be. Uh, it's five hours driving, so we will need to stop for a 45 minute break, which is really annoying, because I can get the whole thing done in five and a half hours. Trailer dropped off, hang on, you're not very straight. I could get the trailer dropped off and get back to our yard in five and a half hours, probably. As long as I don't get caught up in traffic, then I probably will, so. Never mind. We'll make use of the uh, of the morning traffic. It's a beautiful morning. Uh, it's ten to six now in the morning. So it's five fifty, and look how bright it is. It's amazing. It feels like it's going to be a nice day. It's cold. It's only five degrees out, but it feels like it's going to be a relatively nice day today. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We get home nice and early, and it's going to be nice when we get home. So yeah, let's crack on. I see when we're uh, a little bit closer. Hello again. Right, you joined me four hours after we left this morning. As you can see, it's raining outside as well, which is miserable. We're just pulling up now to have our break. Because we're not going to get all the way back without needing a break. So we're going to have a 45 minute break in here. Can't remember what these services were called. But um, this is where we're going to be. Cars only all over traffic left, or we can only go left. Been in quite a few services, haven't I, over the last few days? Oh dear, doesn't look like there's a lot of parking. OK. 
caravans go in there, HDBs down here. Oh dear, it does look quite busy. Uh, I can go that oh dear, bit of a bump there. Where are we gonna park? Doesn't look like there's a lot of parking space. Oh dear, oh dear. We need somewhere to park. I do. Just stop here, put it on brake. And we get a 45 minute break in here. No. Uh, it's annoying because we're only an hour away from where we need to be. I've got half an hour's drive time left. So in theory, I'm only half an hour short of drive time to where I need to be. So for the sake of half an hour, I got to have a 45 minute break, which is quite annoying. Never mind. Anyway, I'm going to get out and about because there's nothing worse than having a 45 minute break after four hours of driving and sitting still because then you just start aching and getting tired so I'm gonna go for a walk and uh, yeah so I'll see you in a bit so our break's nearly finished we're on we just turned on 45 minutes now so I'm just gonna wait a few seconds half a minute or so before I go <clears throat> just to make sure it's definitely counted because sometimes it doesn't count so yeah as I mentioned earlier it's a bit annoying that I got to have a break that's my phone telling me my breaks up it's a bit annoying that I got to have a break um, now when I'm only half an hour sort of short of drive time but I understand laws are in place, you know, it's to, it's to make it safer, safer roads. I, I, I totally understand because had I had my own way last night, I probably would have driven all the way back home. And like my ETA back home yesterday was like half one in the morning. And had, had I had my own way, I probably would have done that. And like, I personally feel safe in my ability to do it, but obviously you just don't know, do you? So that's why the laws are in place, is to stop us from doing that. And I totally understand and get it. Right, how do we get out then? Down here, I'm assuming. No signs actually saying the way out. I can only assume this is the way out. Aha, exit. There's we are, we have consummation. There's consummation, this is the way out. There's been a massive accident uh, on the M5 that go in the other way. I passed it just um, just before I come into the services. Turns out there's a lorry that's jackknifed and it shut the motorway up. I, I passed it on the way. I didn't see the jackknife, not lorry. I just saw um, the road was closed. Sat nav was saying there was like in, a, in excess of three hours delay coming, coming the other way, so. Not great. Anywho, I, I was worrying then because we need to be on the other side of the carriageway, not this side of the carriageway, but it looks like we've got to go down to the roundabout and get back on. That's the way it's been designed. We need to get back onto the M5, please. I'm assuming I can get there in the left lane. As soon as there's no left turn, straight on is the first exit. Abnormal load bay. Abnormal loads have to go in there. Ah. Oh. Right, let's get crack a lack in. We are 43 miles away. It's going to take us roughly 55 minutes to get to where we need to be. So not long at all. And then we're going to go straight back to our yard so we're probably looking at just after 12 o'clock <coughs> back in our yard and I will be home before half 12 so all in all for Friday not too bad started at around half five finishing around half 12 what's that seven hours not too bad yeah <laughs> right catch in a bit you join me at the end of the day, end of the shift, 
we um, got the trailer off uh, and now we're just filling up the fuel ready for next week so don't know what I'm doing yet could we do a night work again could we do a day work for Scotland and we've got a clear all I know is I need to get some fuel because I'm on quarter of a tank I filled up Tuesday and um, one just got them in the back and then Thursday I put in 318 litres so it'll be interesting to see whether I've used more or less or about the same I'll find out in a sec right we're on 200 litres now nearly 198 my, my girlfriend's birthday is on Sunday so I have told the boss that I'm not working Sunday or that I can't work Sunday but she will go ballistic if I do Tomorrow, of course, is Saturday, and we plan on going to watch the new Avengers film tomorrow. So that'd be good. And then we're going to go and have an Indian. I think we're going to have an Indian before we go to the cinema. And then before we have an Indian, we're going to go clothes shopping and get some nice cl new clothes. Or not treat her for a birthday, eh? Going up. It was lovely weather in Scotland yesterday, and it was nice. Uh, sort of up there this morning when we left the uh, services at half five. And like, as soon as you got anywhere close to Birmingham, it's just miserable weather. Oh, sounds like we're about to click. You can hear it. There we go. And then, what that normally means is I can put a bit more in. Just still put it at the bottom of the funnel. Last time we put 318 in. 312, 313. 14. Can't go any more than that. So we technically use four litres less. Which ain't bad. <laughs> As you can see, still deep enough. Obviously, expansion and all that. And I use this cloth because it spits out some diesel. I just give the truck a little bit of wipe down all around it. Just to uh, make sure what diesel there was is now taken off. That'll do. Three fourteen. <laughs> Let's put you up there. Let's take these off. What we're doing? Keys, keys, keys. There they are. Three fourteen. So I'm just resetting the suspension from when I took the trailer off. A couple of minutes ago. So that's it. All we've got to do now is just a little bit of paperwork. Obviously, I've got to do more paperwork when we get back to the yard. But I've just got to put in how much fuel I put in. Put 314 in. Right. Unfortunately, this was something I wanted to touch upon real quickly. Hang on. There you go. Let me just change the resolution a sec. There we go. Uh, yeah, something I wanted to touch upon real quickly was um, just now the dash, the uh, the GoPro face for me just completely ran out of SD card storage. And also, yesterday I've done a time lapse video, 35 minutes worth, and the the um, dash cam GoPro that I use also ran out of SD card memory. I had to delete that footage, so I knew I only had 35 minutes worth of footage left, and I probably used most of that up as well. Both of these GoPros have got 32 gigabyte SD cards in. Both of them are filled up. This is a massive, massive vlog. We're talking like 64 gigabytes, just, just the two GoPros, uh, the GoPro Hero 5. That's not including the GoPro 3, which I'm using for audio. So we're probably looking, you know, good sort of 67, 68 gigabytes. I'll have to, um, I'll let you know, because obviously when I transfer it all over it, it'll tell me how, how big all the files are. I'll let you know right now on screen how big this this video actually is. And obviously when I render it, it all gets compressed. Uh, based on the fact that both GoPros are filled up with SD card footage, and I'm now recording on my Hero 3 in 1080p, 30fps, rather than 2.7k, 60fps, I'm going to have to end the vlog. So thank you very much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Like I said, could be two videos, could be one video. I'm not sure yet. But um, I will let you, the, the figure that you've already seen is the combined footage of all footage that I filmed going up to Scotland and back. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, drive safe. Bye bye.